Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the structure of the Earth and plate tectonic theory. It's really important that we look at the structure of the Earth and the processes that take place below our feet in order to understand how tectonic hazards are caused in a little bit more depth. So to start we are going to revise the structure of the Earth and explore what is happening below our feet. Draw yourself a diagram of the Earth it doesn't need to be three-dimensional, just a simple cross-section will work too. Take a look at the diagram on BBC Bite Size. The link is in the description if you need a bit of support to help you to draw the structure of the Earth. Firstly, we have the Earth's crust. Now this is the outer layer of the Earth that we stand and build on, and it's also the land that we find underneath the oceans. It's generally quite thin, 0 to 60 kilometres thick. Underneath the Earth's crust is the mantle. This is the widest section of the Earth, with a diameter of just under 3,000 kilometres thick. It's made up of semi-molten rock called magma, and semi-molten essentially just means it's very thick liquid that isn't 100% melted. And when this magma breaks through the Earth's crust, we then call magma lava. So that's the difference between the two of them. The upper part of the mantle nearest to the crust is harder because it is cooler. But lower down, the rock is softer because of that heat, which we'll move on to. Underneath the mantle, we find the outer core. It is liquid rock made up of iron and nickel, types of metal. It's extremely hot and temperatures are very similar to the inner core. And finally, the centre of the Earth. This is the inner core and it's the hottest part of Earth. The inner core is solid and just like the outer core is made up of iron and of nickel. Temperatures in the inner core average approximately 5,500 degrees. That's actually the same temperature as the surface of the sun. And because of this huge amount of heat, it's seen as the engine room of the Earth. And you might be surprised to hear that the inner core is solid. And there are various theories and ideas why this is the case, but at GCSE, we only really need to know that it's solid. So don't worry about that. We're going to look at the crust in a little bit more detail. So here is a reminder of the cross section of the earth. Pause the video and see if you can label the sections yourself. So right at the top there, you can see that we have the earth's crust. And there are actually two types of crust. And these are split into oceanic crust and continental crust. We're going to look at what each of these types of crust are like. This is really important in order to understand what happens when plates collide into each other. As some plates are made up of continental crust and some plates are made up of oceanic crust. Draw yourself a table like this one with the heading oceanic crust and continental crust. And we want to know where is it found, what is it made of, how thick is this type of crust, how dense is this type of crust, and is the crust younger or is it older? So we're going to start with where is it found? And it's all in the name. Oceanic crust is mainly found under the ocean and continental crust is mainly found where we have our continents. So it's very straightforward. And it's really easy to spot on a map. So for example, you've got continental and then you've got your oceanic. And in terms of tectonic plates examples, South American plate is continental crust and the Nazca plate is oceanic crust. Oceanic rock is made up of basalt rock and continental rock is made up of granite. Oceanic rock is thinner, averaging about 5 kilometres thick. Continental rock is on average about 35 kilometres thick, so much thicker. The hotspots we were talking about in the last video tend to occur on oceanic crust because it's so much thinner than continental crust. And although oceanic crust is thinner, it is extremely dense, and this makes it much heavier. Continental crust, on the other hand, is less dense. Oceanic crust is younger rock. Its density causes it to sink into the mantle, 
and therefore it's constantly being melted, destroyed and recreated. Continental crust, however, is extremely old. It doesn't get renewed or destroyed because it is less dense and it doesn't sink into the mantle. You may want to draw yourself a little diagram to show this contrast between the two crusts. A key thing to remember is that even though oceanic crust is thinner, it is heavier than continental crust because it's denser. So if continental crust and oceanic crust collide into each other, the oceanic crust is going to sink and the continental crust is light enough to be pushed above the oceanic crust. As we saw in the last video, the tectonic plates are moving extremely slowly and we want to know why this is caused and how this is caused. And this key process and also a key term is convection currents. At this point it's really useful to draw yourself a cross section of the earth with the mantle area quite large so that you can draw some additional labels and annotations. A simple way of imagining convection currents is to compare it to a lava lamp. So if you've ever seen or used a lava lamp, the bulb at the bottom is extremely hot and the heat from that bulb radiates into the liquid and causes it to be less dense. And this makes the bubbles rise up and then once they're further away from that lamp and the heat, the liquid cools and it becomes dense and it causes it to sink and then you get that little cycle of bubbles rising and falling. But let's see how convection currents work with the Earth. We're going to imagine we're looking at a cross section of Iceland where the North American plate and the Eurasian plate are moving away from each other. So how does this happen? Firstly, we know the core of the Earth is extremely hot, reaching up to 6,000 degrees centigrade, and the heat rises from the core in the form of radiation, just like our bulb in the lava lamp. The mantle is then heated and the magma rises up because it becomes less dense with that heat. So we can write number one, heat from the core rises upwards in the form of radiation. Once it moves away from the inner core, it begins to cool down because it doesn't have that heat anymore. So number two, as the rock rises due to being less dense, it then starts to cool down. And cooling rock becomes denser and thicker and heavier and begins to sink down back towards the inner core. Once the cooled rock reaches the inner core, it then heats up again and the cycle restarts. And the cycle of rising and sinking creates a current. And this is what we call the convection current. And depending on which way these currents move will result in the direction the Earth's crust or plates are moving. And these convection currents are pretty regular. So you can see on our plate tectonic boundaries map where the plates are moving because the convection current is pushing those plates in certain directions. As you can see here, the North American plate and the Eurasian plate are moving apart from each other. And this is where the country Iceland is located. So you can see where I'm drawing Iceland on, where those two plates are moving apart from each other. And this is what it looks like when you have the cross section of the Earth. So we have just covered all you need to know about plate tectonics and the structure of the Earth for GCSE. It's really important that you feel comfortable and confident about the structure of the Earth, the two types of crust and the key processes taking place before you move on to look at what happens at plate margins and also the related exam questions. So if necessary, re-watch the video or have a look at the BBC Bite Size link and other links in the description to help you if you need it.